Given that we have a motion model and a measurement model, let's return to the Bayesian filtering recursion. The first step in the recursion is known as the chapman kolmogorov prediction. Here, we take the density at time k minus 1, given measurements up to and including time k minus 1, and we also take the transition density, and then we marginalize the previous state. In other words, we marginalize the state at time k minus 1. What this does is that it gives us the predicted state density. In other words, the density of the state at time k, given measurements up to and including time k minus 1. The second step is the base update. Here we take the predicted density, the density of the state at time k, given measurements up to and including time k minus 1, and we also take the measurement likelihood, so the density of the measurement z, given the state, and then we normalize this. And uh, this gives us the updated density, the density of the object state x at time k, given measurements up to and including time k. So we can see that the predicted density is used in the base update, and the updated density is then used in the next prediction. And this gives us the Bayesian filtering recursion. We predict the posterior density, we do a base update, and then we repeat this. In multiple object tracking, the normalizing constant in the base update is sometimes called the predicted likelihood. What we have here is the predicted object density given measurements up to time k minus 1 and the measurement likelihood. And uh, these two densities multiplied give us the joint density of the measurement and the object state. And when we then marginalize the object state, we get just the density for the measurement. So here we have an example. We have a predicted likelihood that has been obtained by marginalizing some predicted state density and some measurement likelihood. Now, let's assume that we have two different measurements, valued 2.5 and 6.9. In a tracking context, we have to reason about which of these two measurements should be associated to the state. We also have to reason about how probable each alternative association is, and we can do this using the predicted likelihood. In this case, we find that the measurement equal to 2.5 has a predicted likelihood of about 0.3, whereas the measurement equal to 6.9 has a likelihood of uh, much, much less. In other words, the measurement valued 2.5 is the most likely measurement of these two. And uh, if we had to make a decision which of these two measurements we should associate to the object, a good decision would be to take the most likely one. Later in this course, we're going to learn about how we can use the predicted likelihoods for multiple objects to reason about data association.